There we go. Okay, I'll, just for the the recording, I'll I'll repeat that this is the way site cleanup office hours, um, and we're just getting started. Um, so I have some some uh, updates, uh, brief but significant to share with you. So uh, let me start by sharing my screen. Okay. So uh, here's the here's what I hope to cover today, and I'd like to you know of course leave time um, once I get through this for other other things you'd like to talk about. Um, I wanted to uh, go over the new office hours and wayside cleanup advisory committee schedule. Uh, we have more big transition news in terms of uh, DEP leadership. I wanted to cover that. Also the um, I and I will say I was away last week, so um, some of this breaking news occurred while I was away, and I and I'm just catching up. Um, but that includes the EPA's announcement of its proposed national primary drinking water regulation for PFAS. Um, talk about the status of the MCP amendments and other other things that are going on in terms of the budget and hiring and uh, David, I see David is here. So um, I was gonna give him an opportunity to give you an update on the Brownfields roundtables that he's organizing and conducting. So just uh, to start out, I, in case you weren't at the advisory committee meeting last um, month, um, I wanted to let you all know that we've moved the date for many, many years. Um, the, the advisory committee was held on the fourth Thursday of the month. And uh, in the last couple of years, when we've um, been fitting in the office hours in between the advisory committee meetings, those were those are were also occurring on the fourth Thursday of every month, uh, but we've recently moved them to the third Thursday. Um, today is an exception because I was away last week, but going forward, uh, we'll be keeping to that schedule of, of holding the office hour meetings and the advisory committee meetings on the fourth Thursday. And if you're wondering whether <clears throat> whether or not they will be held or whether they may have been canceled, we will always uh, make a point of sending out an email from the Waste uh, from the BWSC information uh, email address uh, to rem remind people of the meetings uh, a few days ahead of the meeting. Um, I will say that we had to move our mailing list from one location to another recently because of an IT update, and. Um, you know, we, we heard at least one person ha didn't receive that email. So we'll go back and, and check that list, make sure we transferred all the, the names successfully. Um, but if you're on our email list, you should be getting an update ahead of the meetings. So the, the big news uh, this week is that MassDEP uh, has a new condition, commissioner, uh, Bonnie Heipel. She started on Monday. Um, and we're very excited uh, to have have her here and have her leadership. Um, she comes to us from uh, environmental law practice at Wilmer Cutler Green Hail and Door, where she worked on issues uh, related to environment and energy. And I had an opportunity to meet her on Tuesday, uh, where I also learned that she had for a time worked for Connecticut uh, DEP when it was DEP. Um, and she has, um, you started right in uh, working on um, the issues that we've provided to her in briefing memos, and she's meeting with the various programs and bureaus over the next, the, the bureaus and the regional offices over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we did highlight for her, um, as far as wayside cleanup um, priorities for us, including our work on PFAS sites, uh, the status of the MCP amendments underway. Um, we highlighted the soil capacity um, issues uh, that 
we're all in the midst of looking at and, and finding ways to um, address them. Uh, so we, we hope to be working with her on those issues very shortly. Um, in, the, in addition, uh, so uh, at when Commissioner Suberg had left at the end of the year, Gary Moran had stepped in as our acting commissioner. Uh, we're happy to report that Gary will be remaining with us and he is returning to his role as the deputy commissioner of operations. So it will be great to have uh, Gary in that role and, and all his experience um, that he has with our program and familiarity with it. Um, on, that, on a similar note, Stephanie Cooper, who was our uh, deputy commissioner for policy, has moved up to EEA to serve as uh, Secretary Tepper's undersecretary for the environment. Um, so that is both, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry to see her go in terms of her role at DEP. I worked directly with her, um, uh, but now having her up <laughs> at EEA is going to be, um, I think great for us in in terms of her experience with the DEP programs and familiarity with that. So, I think it's a, a positive move overall. Uh, we we um, still are awaiting to um, to have someone fill that role at the department in in the policy position. Uh, I did last week talk about or last last month at the Wayside Cleanup Advisory Committee covered also, also some other um, changes in terms of new appointments, um, including, including our new Secretary for Energy and Environmental Affairs, uh, Rebecca Tepper. Uh, we also have a new Undersecretary, the, the, the first time ever for Environmental Justice and Equity, Maria Bellin Power, and she's, she's going to be involved, among other things, in uh, looking at uh, the comments that have been received on the EJ strategy. Um, so that work is underway. Um, you all have heard, of course, that uh, our longtime assistant commissioner for wayside cleanup, Paul Locke, has retired. Um, and also mentioned last week is that um, Ken Mara has stepped into the role as the acting division director for wayside cleanup uh, for policy and program development, which is, is going to be really helpful to me in terms of um, taking, on, taking on those topics and um, helping me focus a little bit more on the assistant commissioner role. I think I've covered most of what I wanted to say there. Um, so moving on to um, the other big breaking news of last week was that EPA has announced uh, their proposed PFAS uh, National Primary Drinking Water Regulation on um, May 14th. They are proposing uh, MCLs for six PFAS compounds in drinking water. Uh, they include PFOA and PFOS that they're proposing to uh, set, set an MCL for at four PPT for each of those. Um, that is at the the their reporting limit. Um, they are also included uh, PFXS, PFNA, PFBS, and the Gen X chemicals. Um, and the the limit for those would be set based on a hazard index um, and a combination uh, add, adding up to a hazard index, not to exceed a hazard index of one. Um, they include four of the MassDP PFAS-6 compounds. Uh, they include two that we don't include, the PFBS and the Gen X chemicals, and they do not include our PFHPA and PFDA. Um, so we're in the process, uh, of course, of um, reviewing this as part of their uh, public process uh, and, and receiving comments on this regulation. It, it does, has not resulted in any changes in the short term um, in terms of the mass DEP values. Uh, this, their public hearing uh, process, they have a, at this point a 60 day public comment period. Uh, we're anticipating that may be extended to 90 days. Uh, I would encourage you if you haven't checked 
out this already to um, it, visit this link here. It has all of the relevant information, the link to the actual rule, um, some FAQs. They also have some upcoming uh, public sessions. They have um, the opportunity to participate in the hearing and reserve a spot at the hearing, which is in May. Um, we, Mass CP, uh, at this point is is reviewing this information. We're certainly taking it into account as part of our three-year process of reviewing our, our PFAS uh, MCL, which is already underway, um, as well as looking at potential impacts this may have upon MCP-related standards. Of course, um, the MCP uh, adopts the, the MCL as part of our G GW1 standards, but we'd be looking at it uh, with respect to other standards as well. But we're really at this point, just in the beginning of, of looking at that review as part of this process. Um, and also, um, you know, these are proposed standards. So they, based on comment, they are also subject to change before any final rule is made. Uh, other updates, uh, the MCP amendments are still actively underway in terms of uh, um, a, a getting a final sign-off on that package. We've, we've gone through just about every step. We're just uh, uh, awaiting one additional approval. So I'm hoping that will happen soon. Um, and I, of course, we'll keep you posted. We're, we're already involved in working on preparing training and, and looking at what guidance to finalize ahead of that. So we're anticipating it will be happening soon and hoping to get a lot of work done in the period of time between it's finally published and goes into effect. So that we'll be in good position uh, when it does roll out. Um, in DEP budget news, things are looking uh, very good for us in terms of the House One budget. So we're hopeful um, the, those, that process, the, the budget hearings are starting up soon. Um, so we've been pulling together information to support that process. Um, we're hopeful it will include uh, additional positions for DEP. As we've talked about uh, here, we've been spending a lot of time um, doing hiring just to just to uh, fill the positions that um, we have lost through retirement and over the over the past couple of years. So that hiring is still taking up a, a very significant portion of the time and for our staff in Boston as, as well as the regional offices across the wayside cleanup program as well as all programs. So that that continues. Um, let me just check see if I skipped over anything <clears throat> right I should pause and take a breath and and see if there are any questions but I'll just finish up here by turning it over to uh, David to to cover the brownfields roundtables and then we can um, see what questions you have super thanks Liz um yeah so one of my jobs is trying to get information out there to folks about how how to access resources both technical and financial for Brownfields redevelopment. And uh, last week we held one for Central Mass. And unfortunately the blizzard that hit just Northern Worcester County uh, interfered with our parking that day. And so we ended up having to switch to an, a Zoom meeting, um, which actually had a hidden blessing, which means more people were able to attend and everyone on the wait list got in. Um, but the, the we will have the next Brownfields Roundtable at the Old Colony Planning Council offices on May 17th, a save the date should be hitting the airwaves today or tomorrow. Um, and then we'll have registration starting in about 10 days. And the goal there is really to get people like you, everyone who's interested in these kind of activities, um, town planners, town managers, municipal folks, um, and other stakeholders too. So I'm reaching out to kind of nonprofit community-based organizations. The goal is to get all those people in one room so they can kind of both learn about this information, but then network and connect and look for opportunities to conduct Brownfields redevelopment. Um, on the April 4th uh, LSPA training symposium, I will be giving some of this information. It won't be focused on the financial aspects of Brownfields redevelopment, but it will talk about the interactions between MassDEP and the other uh, state agencies like DOER and DOR. 
Um, so anyway, um, and there's my contact info. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, one of the things that I like most about my job is connecting people to the right answer. So I don't I don't know stuff, but I do know who to connect people to. So um, feel free to reach out. So that's what I had, Liz. Great, thank you. I'll stop sharing now so we can see each other's faces. And uh, does anyone have any questions about what I covered or any anything else they'd like to raise? Uh, oh, ahead, I'm recognizing Wendy. Wendy and then Joel. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the update. This came up yesterday. Um, and uh, at a board NLSP board LSPA board meeting, and um, no one really knew the answer. Um, does DEP or Mind Mass DEP comment during the public comment period on EPA's proposed regs? Um, I think I heard the drinking water program talk about uh, that they work through an association of state drinking water programs to provide comments. Okay. So. I think they've done that in the past. Um, DEP may do something additional to that, but I think at the very le least, um, it sounded as if um, they would be coordinating with other states to provide comments. Okay, so wayside cleanup doesn't necessarily do not, that. Do that? Yeah, not necessarily. You'll... We did. We did comment on. Um, we did comment when they were listing PFOA and PFOS as hazardous substances. We commented on that, um, mostly from the perspective of the federal sites program and, okay. and what that would mean. Um, so I, the department, if it comments, it will probably have a, be a coordinated comment across okay. the agency. Got it, thanks. Liz, I was wondering how um, people can get on that list that you mentioned, you know, getting notifications of these meetings if they want to. Um, which meetings are those, Joel? This meeting that you said that, you know. Oh, okay. If you're, so if you're not on the list yet, um, you can send me an email, you can send Ken an email, or you can send an email to BWSC information. Um, most of the requests come in that way. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, issues? <laughs> I guess I'll just announce, if that's okay, Liz, that um, we very much appreciate, the LSPA very much appreciates the fact that there are two uh, sessions for DEP credit at our April 4th symposium, uh, the Brown Fields and Environmental Justice session is sold out. Way to go. Um, and there are still seats available for the session that is being run by EPA and DEP on the um, dewatering and remediation general permit. So spread the, spread the word. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> I was thinking more, more of folks on the call than, than DEP, but obviously DEP too. It's, uh, I think it's, you know, Sean a little and Kathy Canarias. Um, are presenting, and uh, that's that's always important information to hear. So thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Um, so uh, Barry had a, a question or a request in the chat about posting the link to the rule. So if you go, I will post these slides. Let me put it in the chat. So, um, so I'll post these slides after the meeting, but that link I provided on the slide Kim, could you grab that and put it in the chat? Um, if you go there, it will connect you to all sorts of information, including very helpful FAQs and, and the way to access the rule itself. Can you, so can you I, send me the send me the slide, Liz? I, I, I just had your screen. Oh, you're right. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do yeah. it. I'm just okay. not a good multitasker, but you all keep comment. Uh you you all keep talking and I'll find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. 
Well, Liz, while you're doing that, I'm going to make a brief recruiting statement, which is, um, so I'm six months into my role at the state and I'm really enjoying it. And so if there are folks out there in private industry and thinking that you might be interested in a change and an opportunity to help more people on a bigger scale, I, uh, I strongly recommend you go to Mass Careers and uh, just be a pay, pay attention to what the opportunities are. There's some really good roles out there for both early and mid-career and uh, and I'll say later career people who might want to have a change that isn't just repairing bikes. So keep keep an eye on mass careers. <laughs> I meant to put that I meant to put that mass careers information in there as well. When I when you will find it on the advisory committee slides from last last month, um, and I'll I'll include it in this month as well. And anything else people have? Joel, no rebuttal? Yeah, I, I did on the chat. I said, just? Just what? Just repairing <laughs> bikes. He said, Bike. people who want don't want to be just repairing bikes in a very pejorative way. No, I think that's a great side gig. It's not my skill set, but it's, if you're... Doing things with your hands is a very good way to to feel uh, to feel professionally satisfied. So all, I don't, I'm I've not also, against that. I've also started a welding class at Keefe Tech, and I realized I'm never going to be a welder. So that link that link doesn't seem to be working as a link in the chat, but that is the right that is the right link. The LSPA is also sending out. <clears throat> or maybe it already has today, an email blast with a summary of that information and it includes, it includes the link. Great. Thanks, Amita. Amita got it to work. So. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions or comments. We can, we can wrap up going, going. Okay, well, thanks again, everyone for being here. And um, I'm not certain whether next month we'll be holding this as office hours or an advisory committee meeting. I think if we have breaking news on the amendments, we would probably turn it into an advisory committee, committee meeting, and spend more time on it. Um, but we'll keep you updated on that. Thank you, Liz. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Happy spring. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Bye.